Illinois, Oregon, as Ben would say, the best team in the Big Ten is Oregon. Thank goodness Oregon got imported into the Big Ten. What a shame that conference would be, but that's for another day. <laughs> Illinois, Oregon in this game matchup. Heavy fit, three touchdown favorite here to a Come ranked on, opponent. Man. Is Oregon rolling here today, Mark? Again, I, I mean, it's hard to step in front of Oregon at Austin Stadium, right? Like, that just seems like a bad play overall. With a game like this, and I'm not a big fan of Brett Bielema's offense by any stretch of the imagination. I love his defense, but, you know, the offense leaves a lot to be desired. And because of that, I always use the same philosophy I tell you guys about all the time. If they ain't covering early, they ain't covering late. So if I'm taking Illinois, I'll take the 11 and a half in the first half. Because, look, if Oregon is up 14 and a half, how is Illinois playing catch up? Like, literally, how without Oregon making some mistakes or a special teams touchdown or whatever, I, I don't know how Illinois can catch up to Oregon, who's leading by 14 at halftime. Like, it just doesn't seem like it's a good recipe. So, Illinois is going to have to keep it close, stay close the entire game, possibly have a lead at halftime if they have any shot at winning this game. So, give me – if I'm going to take Illinois, give me the, the 11 and a half in the first half. Mm. Certainly so, Mark. You know, it's a great way of looking at the Illini under Brett Bielema since he took the reins in Champaign in 2021. Illinois is 16 and 8 against the number as an underdog with 10 outright victories. They are one of four Power Four programs in that span to have double digit wins outright as an underdog. This year, a perfect 4 0 ATS as a dog winning outright three times Oregon has been a favorite in three of four Big Ten games they are one and two against the number all three the total has stayed under could be ugly in Otson for Illinois to cover as a three touchdown dog 3 30 p.m eastern on Saturday Missouri and Alabama my goodness we got a runaway line here Mark taking a look at a 13 and a half that was mm. available earlier this week we're now seeing 16 and a half at the FanDuel Sportsbook and a total of 51 and a half we I don't really know how good Missouri is but the one thing I do know is Alabama can't afford another loss otherwise they're out completely sure. how do you play this one between Missouri and Alabama now over a two touchdown spread yeah, well, the reason for the line movement is uh, Brady Cook is now questionable or doubtful, rather, and it looks like the starting running back is also going to be out for Missouri. So their offense is taking a huge hit. But in reality, guys, I mean, can you really lay more than two touchdowns with Alabama at this point? Like, I'm not saying bet Missouri here. It's probably a stay away given all the variants, but there's just no way at this point, given what I've seen from Alabama's defense, the lack of a running game on offense and Jalen Milrose erraticness over the past couple of games. There's just no way, no way I can lay this number with Alabama. I'll stay off the game. And, and I think Alabama probably wins it. You know, if, if Brady Cook was healthy, I'd be more inclined to lean on Missouri here to be able to cover this yeah. number. But uh, just too much variance for me to get involved. Brady Cook, man, the Stones last week goes to the hospital to get an MRI on his ankle injury in Columbia, returns to lead a huge second half and fourth quarter comeback against Auburn to keep Mizzou with only one loss this year. But just one and three against the spread against power four competition. They had only scored at most 27 points against power four foes, and they've allowed at least 21 points. Listen, I'm not really buying into Alabama the way I would play this game, if any, is looking at the total, 51 and a half. Okay, you've got some questions without Brady Cook and Nate Noel, and we're turning now to Drew Pine, the former Notre Dame and Arizona State quarterback for Mizzou. Oh, Maybe Alabama's team total figuring things out at home over 34 and a half. Zeno, to your point, Jim Miller, leading rusher for Bama last three weeks, 45 yards or less in all three. It has not looked like Alabama football at times. How about this one? The first time we have seen Vandy in Texas square off in nearly a century since 1920. What? If we sat here a year ago and said, okay, it's week eight mm. in college football. Let me think of the SEC sure. ranked versus ranked matchups. I'm sure Texas Vanderbilt all came to all of our minds. Yeah. Like, my God. Come, come, come on now. Let's give it up for the doors. Checking in at number Anchor 25 down. in the AP poll. First time ranked in the middle of a season since 2008. And a perfect 4-0 number this year, you know, for Vanderbilt as an underdog. They're getting more than three scores at home. They were getting more than three touchdowns at home when they upset Alabama after the Crimson Tide played Georgia. The Longhorns lose to Georgia last week. How does Texas respond? Mm. Feels, feels like a pound of flesh game for Texas, right? Like they're going to take it out of Vanderbilt's you-know-what. Uh, look, Diego Pavia has been excellent. Clark Lee has, looks excellent. like he's turned the program around. Uh, and 
I just wonder how much Texas is going to get up for this game after Georgia. Um, I would probably take the points with Vandy, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a Texas blowout.